I'm Daniel Woods. I'm an adventurer and portrait photographer. I'm an ocean addict. Um, and so I love anything to do underwater. The word for it is magic. You go underwater, it's magic. It's floating. Hair is just doing really cool things. Fabric is just doing really cool things. It's magic. I wanted to do a workshop to bring other photographers, you know, to experience that magic. And so we kind of like turn it into like full blown shoot and a workshop at the same time. When it comes to photographing models underwater, especially ones that are not experienced doing it, there is a learning curve. The way you start chipping away at that learning curve is you need to give them feedback. They need to see what they're doing. You can explain it to them, but until when they see it, they're like, ah, oh, I get it. The only way to do that is you're in a pool. She's wearing a heavy gown. She's not really able to swim across, so you gotta swim over there. See, here's the back of the camera. Can you see the glare through the housing? Okay, okay, you see that? Oh, I got it. Okay, okay, I'll go back over here. Okay, let's go again. All right, so now it's completely inefficient. By the time you get ready to go again, she forgot what she's supposed to adjust, and it's just, it's really difficult. Now, imagine the big, giant monitor on the pool deck right behind me, facing the model. She goes down, she comes up, I'm like, you're puffing out your cheeks. See how to do that? She looks up. Oh yeah, great, okay, let's do it again, bam. Now we're just working, now we're going up. Okay, cool, now we're working, we're getting through the learning curve, now she's dialed in, we're making images, we're having fun, it's working. That is the benefit of tethering. Here's the thing, I don't have to waste energy trying to get back and forth, nor do you. I know. So, being able to see it, I can also correct little things so we don't have to waste more time. So tethering is an invaluable tool, not only for the models, but also in a workshop environment where you're explaining, you're teaching students, and then they can see real time the result of what you just explained you're doing maybe with the camera, even directing the model. We had to figure out how to tether underwater and Outex innovated a data housing with, that allows you to take cords, pass it through the water housing, plug it into the camera without water getting in there. So you can shoot tethered underwater, it's epic. So I thought the Sony A9 would be the camera to use in this environment where I knew that the water clarity was gonna be dropping and dropping and dropping and it was awesome, it was cloudy, and it was getting focus for me quickly and accurately. Then it just let me be free to, to create rather than like fight with my gear. The other thing that was a sheer joy was the joystick. My models are floating all over the place. I may be drifting. For me to be able to quickly use that joystick to control my focus point, it's a dream. It's a total dream. So we also shot with the A7R2 which is awesome, it's like shooting with two lenses. You can shoot wide to get head to toe for their whole pose, but then when the hair is doing something beautiful, I can crop in because of the massive resolution, and it's like shooting with a long lens too at the same time. We're talking like juicy resolution. Usually in the past, continuous lights haven't really been strong enough for the kind of ISO sensitivity the, the cameras have had. And so that leaves you with strobes. But then with strobes, how are you gonna fire those things underwater? Radio waves don't communicate, so you can't just hook up pocket wizards. And the other problem with shooting underwater with strobes, you're usually only gonna get two pictures for what I call like an up and down, where they take a breath and go down and come back up because I have to wait for the strobes to recharge. She may be doing something amazing, and I'm like, oh, I wanna push the trigger, but I just did a second ago, and if I do it now, it's not gonna go. So it's, it's really frustrating to do strobe work underwater because the recycle time. So I discovered Fox Fury continuous LED lighting and all of a sudden all of these images that I wanted to make that were in my head were now in the realm of like totally doable. These lights are submersible, they're battery powered, I don't have to run wires anywhere, I can just click away. The model's under, she's flowing, she's doing her thing, bam, 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 you get the idea, like no recharge. So now I can capture what the model's giving me and not have to like waste half of the beautiful poses or the way her hair had been flowing just at the right moment. I can just sit there and click away, it's amazing. I have loved creating my own light, pretty much doing studio lighting underwater. I love that look, I love what I'm able to create. 
but I also wanted to try some really soft daylight that's really diffused, just kind of pastel -y. And to do that, we were gonna need light, the, the sunlight to be diffused. And so I thought, you know what, we just need a 12 by 12 commercial scrim. We actually just tied it up between uh, cypress trees and palm trees, and it created this amazing, soft, diffused light, um, like you can see in this image right here. this huge production. When it was all said and done, it was the coolest experience because we created amazing images. The participants were like, you know, kids in a candy store. And it was just, it was just awesome. It was just such a great experience with all these, all this cool technology coming together to teach and to create these, these amazing images.